Okay, so, so to start things, uh, Valerie Kabaliuski, thank you very much um, uh, for being here this evening. Um, I wanted to get your understanding or your, or your, or your assessment of the impact of the, of the sanctions announced today, the further sanctions uh, by the EU foreign affairs ministers, and what impact do you think these sanctions will have on the Lukashenko regime? So in the first place, uh, this sanctions package has been approved in principle, uh, or sort of as, as the Europeans say, uh, they gave political green light uh, to this package, uh, but it will be adopted uh, a bit later, uh, since we understand that there is an issue of processing of the paperwork. Uh, for the package. Uh, as far as we understand, the main thrust of this sanctions package is on the migration crisis, and uh, just uh, partially it is devoted to the human rights situation in Belarus. Uh, while it is important that uh, this, uh, the um, kind of these steps of the regime are addressed uh, in such a manner, it's also important to remember that this border crisis uh, is the result of the bigger crisis, uh, that bigger crisis, human rights and political crisis in Belarus, that started 15 months ago after, after the uh, elections, presidential elections that were falsified and followed by the crackdown on the people. Uh, therefore, uh, if we want to resolve uh, such crisis as it is on the border right now and prevent any other crisis uh, around Belarus by the regime of uh, Lukashenko, we need to resolve the main crisis, the main problem, uh, since uh, kind of we see millions of people, of Belarusians are suffering from uh, human rights violations on a daily basis. Uh, but it seems that the Europeans uh, are now more concerned about the very specific, very narrow situation on the border, which is very visual, very visible, and attracts a lot of attention. Now, I mean, you, you, you mentioned uh, the Europeans there. What would you like to see coming, coming from the West, from NATO, from the US, from the EU, from the UK? I mean, obviously, you're a senior advisor to the exiled opposition, you know, opposition leader Svetlana Tsikhanovskaya. What would you like to see there in order, as, as you mentioned, to address the broader picture? What would you like the West uh, to do? Uh, that should be a response directed at sectoral uh, sectors of the economy of Lukashenko uh, in the first place, potash, uh, oil products, uh, but also banking sector. Five state-owned banks control about 70% of, uh, of the financial market and uh, simply prohibiting transactions in US dollars or in euro or in pounds uh, would definitely inflict uh, way more serious damage than any other sanctions that have been impo imposed so far. But again, those would be the measures targeting uh, the actual crisis, the, the real crisis that has started all other uh, kind of branches of, of, this, uh, of this problem. Uh, and we can start with the Ryanair situation, which happened in May um, and had a very serious international implications. Now this is the border crisis. And uh, if, uh, if this problem uh, in Belarus is not resolved, we can see other, other ideas, other um, uh, projects uh, of similar manner from Lukashenko. Now, obviously, there's been a lot of talk about the reaction uh, from the EU, from, from, from the West, if you like. Uh, what about uh, Belarus's big neighbor to, to the east in the case of Russia? Some suggestion that Vladimir Putin has indicated a willingness to, to maybe get involved to, to resolve the problem. If I understand correctly, the Lithuanian foreign minister, Mr. Landsberg, has said today that he would never see Mr. Putin as part of the solution. What is, what is your opinion uh, on that? <clears throat> Russia is definitely not a benevolent actor uh, in Belarus. Uh, Russia is pursuing its own interests uh, that are uh, detrimental to the, uh, to the sovereignty and independence of Belarus. Until now, we have not heard a very clear signal uh, or no signal at all from the United States, from the United Kingdom, from the European Union regarding the deals that Lukashenko signs with Russia. Lukashenko does not have the authority from people. He doesn't have the mandate. Uh, people denied him the right to sign anything on their behalf. Russia is using his weakness and his self-inflicted self-isolation uh, to extract uh, concessions uh, in military sphere, in economic sphere, in political issues, and signs these agreements. And we called once and again uh, uh, all the Western powers, all the Western democracies supporting Belarusian. Uh, uh, democratic pursuit uh, to call on Russia not to do this or to to um, to sort of warn uh, Russia in unequivocal language uh, that any such deals would not be considered legally valid and would have to be considered void. Uh, until now, we have not seen, uh, we have not heard any such statements, and we uh, we see that Russia is pursuing its interests, in, in fact, unhindered. 
Now you mentioned uh, before you're talking about uh, the, the, the Belarusian people and how, how you see it, how, they, how they've been suffering for such a long time. If sanctions by the EU or by, by the West more generally uh, do start to have some kind of impact in Belarus, and that's then is felt by 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 the regular people. There, do, do you see people uh, demonstrating and protesting like they have in the past against Mr. Uh, against Mr. Lukashenko, or do you think this um, this period last year and there are a lot of demonstrations? Do you think that is now over for the time being? Well, I would say that uh, in the first place. Um, most Belarusians support uh, the sanctions uh, from the West uh, imposing this pressure on the regime. Uh, according to uh, uh, recent surveys, 43% of Belarusians support sanctions and 26 oppose them. Interestingly, 55% of Belarusians uh, blame the regime for, for the Western sanctions and only 11% say that this is the uh, default of the democratic forces. So apparently uh, people know why these sanctions are being imposed and people are actually welcoming them, saying like, stop killing us, stop throwing us into prisons, impose the sanctions, kind of we cannot protest kind of peacefully against the this very well equipped uh, militarized machine of the dictatorship. And therefore, the external pressure is very important to stop the sanctions. Importantly, to, uh, to remind that um, sanctions from the EU, UK, US and Canada, they are not meant to overthrow the regime of Lukashenko, they are meant to stop the repressions, to stop the violence and uh, uh, to help Belarusians and the regime start the dialogue that would lead to free and fair elections in Belarus. And one final question to end on on the slightly uh, different topic that Mr. Lukashenko had mentioned at the, at the weekend and got some, I think it's, it's fair to say, a little bit of criticism, perhaps diplomatically, at least from, uh, from, from the Kremlin, talking about gas supplies and potentially cutting off, off gas supplies. That it clearly would be a threat uh, specifically to the, to the EU when it comes to the transportation of Russian gas. Uh, do you think Mr. Lukashenko would actually follow through with this threat? Or do you think actually the fear that the reaction from the Kremlin would be so strong that he would just be too scared to do this? Uh, apparently, this kind of according to the reaction from the Kremlin, we can say that uh, it was improvisation uh, from Lukashenko. That was his uh, sudden geni genius idea, kind of to threaten uh, cutting off gas supplies uh, from Russia to the European Union. Uh, but the problem with this is that there are two actors there. Uh, the European Union, but also Russia. And Russia does not uh, want to, to have any kind of interruptions. And they uh, immediately reacted saying that they would honor their contracts, which means that no interruptions would be expected. Uh, so I think it was uh, completely not coordinated uh, by Lukashenko. It was his uh, sudden idea, but it was rebuked immediately. And maybe one very, very final thing uh, to finish on. I mean, you, you're obviously talking about the, uh, the bigger picture, the broader picture. If let's say that there's a, uh, there's, there's a resolution to this, uh, to this migration crisis, um, do you see Mr. Lukashenko trying to put any pressure on the EU in, in other ways, or maybe he'll try actually to try improving relations with the EU if this very hard approach of trying to, uh, I guess, encourage irregular migration into the EU doesn't work? Do you, do you think he would go for a more softly, softly approach? What I can see now uh, is that after the two calls uh, from the European Union, uh, yes, it was Borrell. Today it was Angela Merkel talking to Lukashenko for 50 minutes. I think that Lukashenko will try to use this crack that he has created in the consolidated position of the European Union to expand it, uh, to, to put the foot in the door and try to, to go further and further and further. He, he did this before, he's doing this now again. This is what we warned about, that uh, this shouldn't happen, uh, that um, this, this conversation should be constructed differently because he will definitely want to, to portray this as, uh, as a victory, as, uh, uh, as a recognition of his uh, presidency by the European Union, and uh, that would be detrimental to, uh, to the efforts to, uh, to bring him to the table to talk to the people about the resolution of this crisis, uh, because until now he refused to recognize that there's a crisis there, and now he, uh, he will feel emboldened uh, by, uh, by this engagement and sort of resolution of the crisis that he has created himself. Uh, so the, his blackmail uh, is working. Uh, he is creating space for himself, or I would rather say that European leaders are creating some space for him.